All right, thank you, gentlemen. Vaughn Hilliard, Garrett Haig. They got a busy week ahead. Joining me now for our lead off discussion, former Maryland Congresswoman and columnist to the Washington Post, Donna Edwards, Vice President of Governance Studies at the Brookings Institution, and author of a book I highly recommend, Divided America, Daryl West, and Senior Vice President of the moderate think tank, Third Way, Matt Bennett, who has worked on multiple presidential campaigns over the last 30 years. We brought the experts in. Congresswoman, we got to start with you. Who are you looking out for in these debates? Who's got the most to gain and the most to lose? Well, I mean, I think that the candidates who've been at the top tier in the uh, polling, uh, folks like Biden, Warren, Sanders, you know, maybe you throw in uh, Kamala Harris in there uh, and, and Pete Buttigieg. But I think those candidates are going to have to build on the support that they have, and they stand more to lose. Some of these others are just going to have to break loose. I don't know how they do that when they get basically, um, you know, 12 minutes over the course of a, a couple of hours. It's really tough to do. And I think that for um, on the second night, I think for uh, for Joe Biden, it is, you know, staying the course, not making any mistakes, taking the jabs without getting um, undone by them. And this is going to I think we're going to see what I've described as the roses who come out of this thousand flowers that have been blooming among Democratic candidates. And some of these candidates, frankly, are going to fall by the wayside. And it's going to be a way for Democrats to cull the field and finally get to the set of candidates who are going to go the distance uh, so that Democrats can make a decision about who's going to take on Donald Trump. If some of those candidates do not break out, their fundraising will be drastically hurt. I got to ask you, Congresswoman, about Mayor Pete. For many, he was an absolute unknown six months, three months ago. Now he is center stage, but he's facing his biggest controversy back home in South Bend, where residents are saying they don't trust him. Is this issue going to make its way to the debate stage, and is it going to impact his ability to win over black voters? Well, I think it was Mayor Pete who put his role as a mayor on the agenda, describing that as the reason that um, he had the skill set to bring to the presidency. And I think what we're seeing here is a candidate who hasn't been tested, hasn't been tested on the national stage. And with black voters, frankly, he had a troublesome relationship with black voters in South Bend. And I think that's coming to the fore now. Whether he can dig out of that, I think that remains to be seen. But if that town hall meeting um, over these uh, a couple of days ago is any indication, um, he's going to have to rethink some of his strategy when it, it comes to understanding uh, the concerns that black voters, have, blacks have in um, in South Bend, but that is mirrored nationally. And he was having a, a tough time beforehand, and I think it's gotten tougher uh, since the trouble in South Bend. Uh, Daryl, who are you looking out for in these debates? I'm watching Biden because I think in a debate like this, you always have to try and address your weaknesses. So he has the race problem based on his comments about segregation of senators uh, last week. So he needs to reassure African-American voters that he understands their feelings. But he's also a career politician running for president at a time when two-thirds of Americans say they are dissatisfied. So he has to provide a compelling case of how somebody who's been in Washington, D.C. for 40 years can bring meaningful change. The president continues to go after Joe Biden, clearly because he's the front runner, but he's going after him now about Obama not yet endorsing Joe. Take a look. How he doesn't get President Obama to endorse him, there has to be some reason why he's not endorsing him. He was a vice president. They seem to have gotten along. And then he goes and lies and said, I asked the president not to endorse me. Give me a break. <laughs> he said he asked the president because he's embarrassed by the fact that Obama is not endorsing him. So he goes out and says, I asked President Obama not to endorse me. Well, he was trying to get the endorsement. So it could be that President Obama knows something. But there is something going on in that brain of his. We do not know that Joe Biden lied about that. We should just note. Uh, should Joe Biden be going after President Trump on the debate stage, or should he be focused on the other nine people up there against him? Well, first of all, if you scoured the earth to find someone 
the least qualified to comment on this field, I think Donald Trump would be at the very bottom. So I, I th Yeah, except, of course, he is the president and the one is. to beat. Um, yes, but uh, the people that they're talking to on that debate stage are Democratic primary voters, and they universally loathe this president. Um, the answer is, sure, they should talk about Trump, but I think one danger is all 10 people on each stage are going to try to ta take a backseat to no one in their hatred of Trump, and it isn't going to provide any kind of daylight between the candidates. What I think uh, is the biggest uh, and most interesting thing that's going to happen on that stage is, uh, as Garrett said, some of the lesser known candidates and the people at 1%, they don't need to just introduce themselves. They need a breakout moment because the stakes go up very rapidly. For the next debate, you have to have much higher poll numbers and more donors. So these people need to do something big and something fast. Congresswoman, I realize to Matt's point, those on that stage are up there performing for primary voters, Democratic primary voters, but do they need to look ahead? Because those voters are thinking, who isn't just going to win the nomination? Who then needs to win on the big, big stage against President Trump? Well, look, I think voters want somebody who's, primary voters, Democrats, want somebody who's going to defeat Donald Trump. I don't think it means that the candidates have to spend all night talking about Donald Trump. If they do that, they're not going to be talking about themselves. They're not going to be making the case to Democratic voters that they have something uh, to sell that Democrats want to buy. And so I wouldn't spend all my time talking about Donald Trump, but you can present yourself in a way that suggests that you would be the best of the Democratic field to go after President Trump in November. That's the challenge for some of these Democrats. And I, just, I think it's really going to be hard to get that breakthrough moment when you're on a stage of 10 with candidates who have far more name recognition, have more, have more details out there for voters to look at. Uh, it's going to be tough to rise to the top uh, out of that bottom, bottom tier. Matt, let's talk about the wealth tax. We're now hearing from some wealthy billionaires, George Soros, Abigail Disney, now Chris Hughes, who is a co-founder of Facebook, saying, tax us more. Until now, we didn't hear that from wealthy people. Are we actually seeing a shift? And you could see some of the billionaire class get on board with an Elizabeth Warren, because back of the envelope, you, you pool super rich people in New York City, they're not playing for Team Warren. <laughs> that is probably the case. There, there has always been a, a cadre of liberal millionaires and billionaires who have been saying this for a long time. There's a group called the Democracy Alliance, very wealthy liberal donors who've been talking about this. And as you recall, small Bill, group. That was fairly small. And Bill Clinton uh, gave speeches at the, uh, at the Obama convention saying, you know, I'm fairly wealthy now, tax me more. So this has been a theme for, as you say, a small group of people in the party. I do think there is unanimity among Democrats that the wealthy need to be taxed more. Every single person in the party believes that the Trump tax cuts were a disaster. And even before the Trump tax cuts, the tax rates were too low on the wealthy. The question is what level and how you do it. And there's going to be a lot of debate over the mechanisms. But I think the theme is going to be pretty universal. The issue will be how are you going to actually execute that. Congresswoman Edwards, thank you so much. Darrell West, Matt Bennett, you're going to stick around because we have a lot more to discuss this morning. Why? Because we are less than 36 hours away from the first Democratic presidential debate. Two nights, one stage, 20 candidates. The primetime events will be broadcast live across NBC, MSNBC, and Telemundo, and will be streamed on NBC News Digital Properties. We will all be all eyes on the debates. And coming up